Hey everyone, in this tutorial we will learn some smart modeling techniques that make the model more adaptable and more easier to edit and test the variations. And we will also learn when to use Mesh for faster and more practical workflow. Now you can download all the source files from the Batterium page and it is going to be for free for the next 6 months. Ok, uh, now I want to talk about smart modeling. So smart modeling is any modeling technique that uh, makes the model more easier to edit and more easier to, to test variations. So the first commands that are very commonly used in uh, Rhino for smart modeling is record history. You can find it here and you can came here, right click and choose all the record history. So for example, here in this model, I used, I, I used, I modeled all of this object while uh, setting always record the history on. So let's come here to the massing layer and type SEL CRV and let's isolate these curves and let's now open the facade and let's lock it too. So the record history were set we're on while modeling the, the mass and modeling the facade. So if I edited these curves, so for example, if I like moved maybe these curves like this, as you can see, the whole facade have been updated and this, this is applied to all these masses. So you can start making adjustment to the mass and everything is going to be updated at the same time. This is very, very useful when you are still in the conceptual design stage. As you can see, it's a very, very complex mess and still updating. Same thing came here for this skylight. If I maybe move this curve like this, as you can see, everything is going to, to update. Let's control it for now. And I want to show you an, another thing uh, here for these louvers too. Let's unlock, select it and let's unlock this facade, the facade layer. So for these louvers, I use record history while modeling everything. So here, for example, I came to these curves and press F10 and maybe start editing these curves. Focus on this object. If I move this curve, maybe something like this. As you can see, the whole facade is updated. Let's control Z for now. And any adjustments that I will do here is going to be reflected into this facade. Also, you can change the direction. For example, this part uh, is not, the direction of this part is not uh, adjusted. So we can maybe reverse X and Y. As you can see, now it's adjusted. Same thing to this, let's unlock Let's unlock everything. Same thing for this part. If I moved this like this. The mass and the facade have been updated too. This is very, very powerful. This is why record, record history is really a very, very powerful command if you use it to its full potential. You can maybe also if I scale this, maybe something like this. The whole facade and the mass is going to be updated. So the, smart, uh, the, the same thing comes here. If I start adjusting this skylight, maybe came here in transform and create a bounding box plane and maybe start scaling this a little bit. As you can see here, the, the opening in the middle, uh, the size has been changed. Maybe reducing the size of it, like scaling it something maybe like this or moving it like this. Every, every change that I do here is reflected here. Let's press Ctrl Z for all of this for now. Okay, so the, the next thing about smart modeling is using blocks. So let's unlock the facade. As in the previous tutorial, we explained how to create blocks and the plugins that we need to use to edit block more easier. 
and I also explained that so, uh, we can test the variations easier. So for example here, all of these facades are made of, this, of the same block. Same thing goes here. All of these objects are this, of the same block. So if I did any adjustment here, all the other facades are going to be adjusted too. For example, maybe something like this. As you can see, all the other facades have been updated too. Let's hide the massing for now. You can also use it to test the variation. So for example, you can select this block and type select the block instance name, press enter, okay, hold control to deselect this one and type replace block instance, choose none, select the block from list and choose maybe block two. As you can see, all of them have been changed simultaneously. Can test another uh, few other variations, select the block instance name, okay. Hold control to select this one, type replace block, choose none, select it from block definition, choose three, here we go, okay. and, and so on. And the third thing about smart modeling is using mesh whenever it is suitable. Because mesh leads to a smaller file size and it is faster in computing and faster in editing because it, it contains actually less information than a NURB surface. This is why when, when we are working on some kind of skylight like this with, with a triangular panels, it, it is way easier to use mesh because uh, any triangle will lead to a planar surface and a mesh contains more than enough information to define it. However, if we use a NURB surface, it's going to take way more time to compute and it's going to take way more time when editing it. And I will show you an example. So here I have two surfaces. I modeled this surface using record history. So if I edited any of these curves, the surface is going to be updated. And here we have the exact same panels, same shape, same material, same layer, same everything, except this one is made from poly surfaces and this one is made from mesh. So uh, to map these panels into a surface like this, we are going to use a command called flow along surface. You can type flow along surface or you can find it here in the transform tab, flow along surface. So select it, select the object to flow along the surface, right click, select a base surface, which is uh, this one. But in the setting, I set auto adjust to no so we can if we adjust it it changes the u or v direction of this base surface this one the the surface is going to be updated so set this to no rigid to no and preserve structure to no and make a copy to yes and select the base surface which is this one then select the target surface as you can see it is taking like few seconds to compute Here we go. And now let's right click to bring the command again or select it from here. Select the mesh, right click, set the same exact same setting, select the paste surface, and now select the target surface. As you can see, it have been it, it, uh, it have been mapped in like less than one second. It's way, way faster than using poly surface. And by the way, the, the difference in the file size is going to be huge. And now if I want to make adjustments, so if I came to this surface and change, like maybe swap UV and then right click, this is judged like in no time. If I came here and came change UV and choose swap, right click, it's, it's still going to take like few seconds to compute. And it, it is taking too, too long to compute, which will make it very difficult to edit like uh, for example here i can came here and select maybe this curve and start maybe moving it like this or like this and it's computing very very fast so uh, there's no problem here maybe i can i can select the curve here one this curve maybe selecting this curve plus f10 start moving it like this you can you can edit very easily but however if i came here 
let's uh, log this for now. Let's log the surface. And if I select this curve and start maybe moving it like this, as you can see, it is taking forever to compute. This is why this is not something practical to work with. This is why using mesh in some cases like this is very, very useful. So let's try to adjust this one. As you can see, it's still taking too long to compute. So whenever you have some kind of paneling like this, whether it is uh, triangles or uh, rectangles or whatever, it is way better to use mesh. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you later.